That looks good and stable, doesn't it? It is footage captured with a cheap action camera and a budget-friendly wearable gimbal. Called the iSteady XG1, it is referred as the classic edition because it's easy to use, well-capable and affordable. And that's why it's time to inspect. A warm welcome to everyone, it's the Tech for All channel and it's me, Michael, speaking, as usual, reviewing cool tech that often is a real bargain. This one is the lightest and smallest stabilizer and I quote all of the worlds, whatever that means, just saw that on Hoem's website. So that's the situation nowadays. There are two awesome action cam brands out there which can stabilize videos so well that a gimbal is almost unnecessary. Thing is that these cameras are often expensive and the electronic image stabilization, what they use, is not great for low light. Often people face this dilemma to invest more in an action camera with better stabilization and the drawback in low light mentioned or a cheaper action camera combined with a cheaper gimbal. There's nothing better than mechanical stabilization because it doesn't negatively impact the photographic qualities of the footage and that's why devices like the DJI Osmo Pocket are so successful. Most of the action cameras with electronic image stabilization use higher shutter speeds in order to stabilize the picture and higher shutter speed means lower amount of light reaching the sensor of the camera and I believe you can clearly see the difference side by side. Not to mention the cinematic drawbacks. Today we choose to explore the path with mechanical stabilization and cheaper action cameras. If you're cautious about the price, both devices may cost half of what you currently should pay for a brand new Hero 8 by GoPro, because the iSteady XG1 Classic is in particular below $130. In terms of unboxing, it's rather not too much. Great news is that even with their most affordable wearable gimbal, there's a carrying case included and even a small tripod. Usually the small details make the big difference and while it is too early to praise the device, it definitely is a confidence booster. The gimbal itself indeed looks small and can handle only action cameras with GoPro-like form factor. Most of the popular action cameras of this year will fit, with exception of the Hero 8, which is larger than the predecessor, but as mentioned doesn't seem to need any help for stabilization. The other camera I'm pretty sure won't fit here is the SJ9 Strike because of its bulkiness, but since mine is out for repair, I can't prove that on the video. As for hardware specifications, each of the axes has up to 320 degrees range, the total weight is around 210 grams, 2.5 hours operating time and, unfortunately, not being waterproof. Great news is that the body is built out of aluminium alloy, which means that it should be tough to break. There are two micro USB ports, one of which may be used for charging the action camera, even while you're filming with it. Mounting of a device is quite easy and if doing it properly, there is no way the camera to accidentally detach. There is possibility to mount even the Sony RX0 with an optional adapter. The modes are being controlled from one single button, so yeah, we only have one button to use. Here's how that works. Pressing for 3 seconds will power on or off the gimbal and then short presses can control the different behavioral scenarios. Another great news, there's no need to add counterweight. The gimbal is self-balancing and even if not perfectly balanced, there won't be the need to do anything because the motors are powerful enough to avoid vibrations. The default mode is pan following, where you will see the LED flashing shortly, on a regular basis, double short press enables the pan and tilt follow, and the roll axis remains locked, so now the camera can move up and down and left or right while the horizon is still locked. Three presses enable the all lock mode, which is great to be used if you know that only one direction would be followed, and visually you will see the LED blinking shortly three times. Four presses enter the All Follow mode, indicated by quadruple LED blink, and that's a very dynamic mode and feels like in-body image stabilization might come handy in some situations. Often wearable gimbals can do something that their bigger brothers usually can't. With a hand, you can adjust the position of the camera, just move it to the preferred direction, keep still for a couple of seconds and the gimbal will accept the value. The most ridiculous part is that, despite the small size, this gimbal has inbuilt Bluetooth 
and supports a smartphone app. You can switch between modes, fine-tune the motor's behavior, make the compensation of the movement smoother or more dynamic. Great that HOM, that's by the way the manufacturer's name, they always allow the fine-tuning of the motors and also the easiest way to get smooth panning of the scenery. I wish they would have invested a bit more in the software and hopefully in the future releases we might see the gimbal supporting time-lapse videos because that feature is not available yet. For video stabilization qualities, it is quite good, doesn't do anything worse than the much more expensive models and being that lightweight will probably give it the edge compared to some other bulkier solutions. Great to see how simple to use everything here is and great that Hoem have been so thoughtful by providing these accessories. If you go for a slightly larger tripod and use the mounting screw, the XG1 Classic can turn into a great vlogging stabilizer. Pick the action camera of your choice and the mode to be used. I usually prefer the all follow mode because it looks more natural and stabilizes well at the same time. And so here we are wrapping up with the Akaso V50X with mechanical stabilization only. So I've entirely switched off the electronic image stabilization. I guess that's something you can easily recognize by the lack of any artifacts in the background because this is the side effect of footage which is stabilized in a software way. Uh, and I wanted to make this test just to show you the amount of noise that our motors are bringing into the embedded microphone of the camera. And now I'm switching back to the external mic. By the way, the Acaso V50X already has external microphone option something you can buy. I don't have it yet, still waiting for it. But anyhow, in general, this is a great wearable gimbal with a lot of fantastic features. And those two obvious disadvantages, not being waterproof or splashproof, and a smartphone app which requires a little bit more work because, for example, it doesn't support any kind of time-lapse. If you think this is your gimbal, make sure to support the channel at no cost for you, purchase using the links in the description below the video. And if you still want to see more gimbals, make sure to check the link playlist with more awesome stabilizers. Thanks a lot for watching this review, take good care of yourself and I'll see you again in a few days.